Welcome to this session where I will introduce you to the structure of our course and provide a brief overview of all the models we will be building together. In this course, we will explore in detail and practically everything you need to know to master BPMN 2.0 and use Visagi to model business processes efficiently. Our course is divided into six sections, each designed to cover different essential aspects of BPMN 2.0 and its practical application. Here is an overview of the first three sections. In the first section, we will start with a clear and concise definition of BPMN 2.0. We will discuss its importance in the context of business process modeling and break down each of its fundamental elements, such as gateways, events, and tasks. This section will lay the necessary foundation for understanding and effectively using BPMN 2.0. In section 2, we will introduce Visagi, the main tool we will use throughout the course. I will show you how to download and install the fully functional free version of Visagi. Then we will provide an introduction to process modeling in Visagi and develop our first diagram, the purchase requisition process. This section will allow you to familiarize yourself with the Visagi environment and start creating your own process models. In section 3, we will develop two models to illustrate three key concepts. First, inter-entity processes, second, attach interrupting and non-interrupting events, and third, sub-processes. The two examples will help you understand and apply these three concepts in practical scenarios. Continuing with the overview of our course, let's delve into the remaining sections that we will cover. In the fourth section, we will undertake the most complex model of the course, which is nearly a real case study. We will begin with a tactical perspective by developing a high-level generalized model. Following this, we will transition to a more operational perspective with a detailed model. Finally, we will introduce the concepts of process engines, applying them in a third model to differentiate between human-driven and process engine-driven control flows. This comprehensive approach will give you an in-depth understanding of BPMN applications in real-world scenarios. Section 5 is all about hands-on practice to build your confidence in BPMN 2.0 modeling. You will have three practical cases to develop on your own, and I will provide suggested solutions to guide you. The cases include booking process in a travel agency in which you will gain insight into the intricacies of managing travel bookings. Second, the nomination and selection of Nobel Prize in Medicine in which you will understand the process flow of this prestigious award. And finally, email voting process, in which you will explore the dynamics of an online voting system. These assignments are designed to solidify your learning and ensure you can apply the concepts effectively. In the final section, I will introduce three innovative ways in which ChatGPT can enhance your BPMN work. First, you will learn how to use ChatGPT to create tailored BPMN cases. Second, you will understand how ChatGPT can help in interpreting complex BPM models. And finally, you will discover how ChatGPT can act as a consultant to provide expert advice on BPMN 2.0. Now that we have an overview of all the sections, let's take a brief look at some of the models we will develop in Invisagi throughout this course. This hands-on experience would not only enhance your understanding, but also equip you with practical skills to excel in BPMN 2.0. The first model we will create is the purchase requisition process. This is a relatively simple diagram, but it serves as an excellent starting point for us to familiarize ourselves with both the various elements of BPMN notation and the practical use of Visagi. In this diagram, we can see a pool with three swim lanes, each representing different stakeholders involved in the process. It clearly delineates two distinct phases, request and quotation. This helps us understand the flow of activities from the initial request for a purchase to a quotation phase. Within this model, we will identify and use several key BPMN elements, such as start and end events, indicating the beginning and the conclusion of the process, as you can see over here. Tasks, representing the specific activities that need to be performed. Gateways, used to control the flow of the process based on certain conditions. And sub-processes, as you can see over here, allowing us to encapsulate and simplify complex activities within the process. By working through this diagram, you will gain hands-on experience in modeling a real-world business process which will lay a solid foundation for more complex diagrams we will explore later in the course. 
The second model we will create is designed to illustrate inter-entity processes, specifically where a customer interacts with a pizzeria to order a pizza. While this is another straightforward example, it effectively demonstrates the concept of message flows between two entities. In this diagram, we can observe how the customer and the pizzeria interact through various stages of the pizza ordering process. This model showcases several important BPM and elements, including parallel gateways used to split the process into multiple paths that can run simultaneously, and secondly, event-based gateways, which control the flow based on the occurrence of certain events. This example will not only help us understand inter-entity interactions, but also provide a clear visual representation of how different BPM and elements come together to model complex, real-world processes. By working this diagram, you will gain a deeper understanding of how entities communicate and coordinate within a process, further enhancing your BPM and modeling skills. Continuing with the third section of our course, we will develop a model of the order fulfillment process. This model is particularly useful for illustrating the use of interrupting and non-interrupting events. This one over here. These events are crucial for managing process flows based on certain conditions, where interrupting events will disrupt the current flow and initiate a new one, whereas non-interrupting events will allow the current flow to continue while also triggering additional actions. This model also provides an excellent opportunity to create our first detailed subprocess, purchasing. As seen in this tab, this subprocess delves deeper into the specifics of the purchasing activities, highlighting how interrupting and non-interrupting events are documented in greater detail. Through this diagram, we will gain a comprehensive understanding of managing complex processes and sub-processes, ensuring we can effectively handle various events and conditions within a business process. In the fourth section of our course, we will develop what is likely the most complex model of the course, a BPM and case study in the software industry, titled From Orchestration to Collaboration. In this section, we will actually create three different models, which you can see in the tabs of the Visagi file. The first one is a high-level tactical model. This model provides a broad overview of the process, capturing the main steps and stakeholders involved at the strategic level. The second one is a detailed operational model, which dives deeper into the specifics, detailing each task and interaction to provide a comprehensive operational view of the process. And finally, we have the process engine model. This final model will allow us to observe the interaction between human stakeholders and a process engine that automates the incident ticketing system. This will illustrate how automation can streamline and enhance process efficiency. By working through these models, you will gain insights into both high-level and detailed perspective of business processes and understand the critical role of automation in modern workflows. In the fifth section, the focus shifts to you. In this section, you will develop three models on your own, although I will provide detailed solutions in video format. The first model you will tackle is the booking process for a travel agency. In this model, you will apply various elements we have learned throughout the course. As you can see, you will use parallel gateways and event-based gateways to manage the flow of the booking process. Additionally, you will incorporate an expanded subprocess as you can see over here, for handling reservation cancellations and utilize iterative flows through the gateways. The second model in this section is related to the novel prize in medicine. As you can see, it is composed of three phases, nomination, preliminary selection, and final selection. Each of these phases is represented by interactions with different stakeholders modeled through various pools. In this exercise, you will also illustrate the use of artifacts and annotations to clarify the process. Artifacts such as data objects and annotations provide additional context and details, making the process more comprehensible and easier to follow. This comprehensive model showcases the structure and methodical approach of the Nobel Prize selection process, providing you with practical experience in managing multi-phase processes and stakeholder interactions. And finally, the third model in this section is related to the email voting process. 
This model is relative complex and includes two expanded subprocesses, the discussion cycle subprocess and the voting subprocess. Also, it includes the use of parallel gateways and a unique set of gateways at the end of the process. These gateways allow us to model the various iterative cycles that might occur during the voting process. The expanded subprocesses provide detailed steps for specific parts of the process, ensuring clarity and a thorough understanding of each phase. The parallel gateways manage concurrent activities, enhancing the efficiency of the process flow. This model will give you practical experience in handling complex workflows with multiple iterative cycles, making you adept at managing similar processes in real-world scenarios. In the final section of our course, I will demonstrate three ways in which ChatGPT can assist us with our BPMN 2.0 models. One of these applications is the creation of customized cases, allowing us to practice BPMN notation through specific examples in industries of interest, which you will not find in any textbook. For instance, if you are interested in the healthcare industry, you could ask ChatGPT for a detailed description of the process of managing hospital appointments, including different phases and stakeholders. ChatGPT will generate this description for you and you could then model it in Visagi, as I'm demonstrating on the screen. This capability not only enhances your learning experience by providing practical, relevant examples, but also allows you to tailor your practice to your specific interests and professional needs. As you have seen from this introduction, this course is very hands-on, where you will learn by doing and enjoy the process. If you haven't enrolled yet, I encourage you to do so. This course offers a practical and engaging way to master BPMN 2.0 and Visagi. I look forward to seeing you in the course. Thank you.